The first commands we will cover are PWD, CD, and LS. PWD stands for Print Working Directory, CD stands for Change Directory, and LS stands for List, as in list the contents of the current directory. This is analogous to pointing and clicking on a folder on your desktop, and then seeing what's inside. Note that in these tutorials, the words folder and directory are used interchangeably. The terminal is where we type commands and make things happen. You can open up a terminal by clicking on the Spotlight Search icon and typing Terminal. Click on the first result that appears. Your terminal may not look like mine. You can change the appearance by clicking on Terminal, Preferences, and then change settings such as font type, font size, and background color. You can make the size larger or smaller by holding Command and then typing the plus sign or the minus sign. When you first open up a terminal, the default is to start out in your home folder. Type ls to see what's in here. The command returns a list of all the folders and all the files in that directory. Now type pwd. This returns the absolute path to your current directory, a list of directories containing other directories, going all the way to your current directory. The top of any path or directory hierarchy is called the root, symbolized by a forward slash. You can see the same thing by opening up Finder and clicking Go, Go to Folder, and typing forward slash. If you want to move to a different directory, type CD and then the name of the directory. For example, let's navigate to the desktop by typing CD Desktop. This is called a relative path, since desktop is a directory within my current working directory. In other words, if the directory shows up when you type ls, you can navigate to it by typing cd and then the name of the directory. Now type ls and see what's there. In this case, there is one folder there named Andy folder. We can make another directory by typing mkdir, short for make directory, and then the name of the directory. Type mkdir, experiment folder, and press enter. And then type ls. It will return the names experiment folder and andy folder, which are the only things in the desktop directory. And you can see a folder icon on your desktop as well. Now type cd experiment folder to go into that directory and type ls to see what's inside. This is the same as double-clicking on the experiment folder icon and seeing what's in the finder. If you want to get out of this folder from the command line, you have two options. One is to type cd followed by the absolute path to the desktop directory, which is tedious. A better option is to use the shortcut cd dot dot, in which dot dot represents the parent directory or the directory immediately above the current directory in the path hierarchy. Also be aware that a single dot represents the current directory. In other words, if you typed cd dot, you wouldn't go anywhere. You would stay exactly where you are. This may seem useless, but it can be used in more advanced scripting. Now let's make two more folders, one called experiment directory and one called my folder. Now type cd exp and then press tab. The command line will fill in all of the characters common to both experiment folder and experiment directory. In other words, the command line knows that you must want something starting with the word experiment, but now it can't decide which one to choose. If you provide one more letter, let's say F, and then press tab again, then it knows the experiment folder is the only directory with those characters. Now remove everything from your command line by holding down Control and then pressing U, which will save you the trouble of pressing backspace to delete each character. Let's try one more exercise. Type CD and then M. What do you think happens now if you press Tab, and why? Let's finish with another shortcut command, the tilde sign. The tilde sign represents the path to your home directory. If you type cd 
followed by the tilde sign, it will take you back to your home directory no matter where you are in the path. Alternatively, if you navigate to another directory and then type cd with no file names or data following it, in other words, with no arguments, you will go back to the home directory. What would happen if you typed ls then the tilde? Why? What about ls tilde forward slash desktop? Although we've covered only three commands here, we've covered quite a bit of conceptual ground with Unix. Review these commands and make sure you understand what they stand for and what they do, and then use them for the next five or 10 minutes to make sure you feel comfortable with them. Also review these concepts and try to define them in your own words. In the next video, we're going to add more commands to our toolbox, including commands to copy, move, and remove files and directories. See you soon.